you today with a tutorial that I'm going to explain to you of what I do with wax still with my ball jointed dolls but I also use this on other dolls as well. Now this tutorial is going to show you some paints but I'm not going to actually get into the painting part of it but I'm bringing this stage of a t this tutorial to my art channel because most of the times when I start a doll I always seem to have to paint the head, put the eyes in, all, all of that and then there's some times that I don't need to do it but because I paint it, I put the eyes in, eyelashes, eyeliner, whatever it's because I am trying to get the feel more for the doll and trying to hold on to the feeling even more so. So this is why I'm bringing you this stage. Okay, for most of you that have followed my tutorials, you know that I I don't use alcohol on raw clay and I try not to use acetone. I don't make a habit of it, that is what I'm saying, because sometimes I can have a mark on my clay and I will have to use acetone. I just don't make a habit of using acetone on every single doll that I do. I just feel that, that alcohol and acetone are two very harsh chemicals on polymer clay. Now I understand a lot of people do use both of those and alcohol does clean raw clay but my feelings with alcohol is that you are taking the oil out of the raw clay. In my situation I leach my clay then if I were to put alcohol on my raw clay and I don't care even if I oil my polymer clay down before I put it in the oven I will guarantee you that my my dolls will crack either the head the body it doesn't matter it's wherever I have applied alcohol I understand that this does not happen with everyone it does with me and I've had a lot of people email me and they have the same experience now for people that do use alcohol and acetone, I do feel that we need to put back into the polymer clay what we took out. So I think that this is going to help people that do use it, but they don't experience the cracks when they, when, when they do use it. Okay, let's get started. I have the head that I did in my first tutorial showing you how I use a core wax to make my dolls hollow. If you haven't watched that, I recommend that you watch the first and the second one. I show you how to hollow and how, to, how I set eyes. Okay, I am going to take some acetone here and I am choosing to wipe it down with a paper towel and I am also choosing to put more acetone on it than I than you normally should be only because I'm trying to make something happen with my polymer clay that does happen with polymer that does happen when people use acetone and their dolls are extremely dirty in order to put acetone on your dolls you want to use just uh, like a q-tip and or a paintbrush and put very lightly acetone. Okay, now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to wipe this down and I do recommend that if you're going to use acetone on a rag or get it near your hands, wear gloves. I'm choosing not to because I'm not really touching it and I'm not going to be working with it for very, very long. Now that as you're using acetone, you have to be very careful because acetone will take away your detail. Okay. Now, I don't know if you're going to really see any of this actually on camera, but it's going to give you the steps and you will understand what it is that I'm talking about and what I'm doing. Okay. I have my ball jointed doll all ready. Now I'm referring to 
I would do this if I have my arms and my legs. I do this stage with all my pieces, but I'm only showing you it on the head today. Okay, I'm going to take some clear wax and let me just wipe my melting pot out here. And I'm just going to break off a piece. You don't need much. And the other thing that I want to say with this is that, like a lot of times if I have a little pieces on the table, I throw it back in the melting pot and even on my rag if I have big chunks or something, I, I set them aside and, and I keep using them over and over. Okay. Now that my wax is, is melting, and I will bring my pot over and I will show you. Because I don't want to burn myself while I'm doing it. Okay, see my wax? Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Q-tip. And I recommend a Q-tip because you don't want to use your paint brushes. At least I don't. And I'm going to apply it, the wax, to the whole head, but I'm not going to do the whole head for the tutorial. I'm going to apply, the, apply it really good. And then I'm going to take, take a clean paper towel or some sort of a rag. Now this one has a little bit of paint on it, but it's okay. And I'm going to wipe it. Now what this does, in my opinion, is the wax is putting back in what the polymer clay has as far as when we go and we use alcohol on raw clay or we do the acetone. It's putting that back in that we just took out. That is just my opinion. Now the other thing that I do want to share with you is that I really do feel this. And again, this is just my own opinion. I have been doing this for many years, and I've never had a ball joint, jointed doll break on me. When I do the core with the wax, I've explained to you in the first tutorial, I go for a thinness in my dolls. When your polymer clay is thicker, it has a different look to it. When you go thinner, it has another different look to, it, look to it, and that is the look that I'm going for, is the thinner. Now, why do I want thinner? I want the light to come in, but I don't want it to be to where it's real transparent. I just want the light to be able to come in. And that by doing the wax core, that is exactly what I'm getting. And Again, in my opinion, I feel like I am getting more of a feel and a look of porcelain instead of clay. Okay, now I would keep doing this. I would give it several coats of my clear wax. And the reason I'm doing this, again, for another reason, is that you might not see it on this doll, but when you feel it, you're going to feel it is nice and smooth. And if you have like little impressions from a tool, as long as it's not really bad, the wax will cover it. Now, I'm going to mention this because I want everyone to know I'm well aware of using um, liquid Sculpey. You coat your doll with it. Some of you might say, well, you can do the same thing with that. Again, I'm well aware of it, but this with the wax is totally different than putting liquid Sculpey on. I also feel that the wax, by putting it on the outside of the doll and putting it in the inside of, of the doll, it is, going, it is giving it strength. And I'm going to get into a little bit later of why it's giving it more strength just by me putting it on the outside. Now... After I put all my wax on it, you want to wipe it down, and you do. Go with the feel. You want it nice and smooth. Now, if you've got a little chunk on it, don't worry about it because it's not going to hurt anything. You're going to still end up wiping it off. 
Now, there's several paints that, that you can use. You can use um, Genesis. You want, you want to use like an oil-based um, paint. Uh, Genesis, I also have some oil artistic, artist um, oil paint. And I also have one that is an, actually a watercolor oil. Okay, now I'm going to show you a couple of different things with this. I'm going to show you just with the flush tone. Sometimes when we mix up clay or something, or we are using a particular clay, for some reason we're not liking the color. Okay, now I'm going to show you something that you can do if I can open this. See, I haven't used it in a, in a long time because I've learned how to keep my clay pretty clean. But this works so well for people that really have had a hard time keeping it clean. There we go. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of this flesh tint and I'm just going to put a little bit on my table. It's going to have like, see I haven't used it. There. And I'm going to take my Q-tip with my clear wax. And let me see. If I do it this way. Okay, I don't know, can you see that? All right, see how it's mixing in my wax? Okay, I'm going to take that and I'm going to apply it to my head. Now actually, this is kind of a little bit like porcelain, but it is different because when we do porcelain after your first fire, now this is at least the way that I did it. I would go in and I would put a base tint like a rose and it would be really oiled down because you used oil then. Now I'm going to wipe this off and then after you do that then you would fire the porcelain doll and it just tints the porcelain and then you go ahead and you put on your your rosy cheeks and your lips and all that and then you fire it again so we're kind of doing that technique but we're not having to do that kind of firing now what this is doing and I don't this is what I'm saying I don't know if you're gonna see it on camera is that it's going to tint the polymer clay and keep putting it on it because what we're doing is we're building it in layers and this is what I really liked about porcelain and when I made the transition from porcelain to polymer clay this is what I was trying to capture was the layering because I love the layering instead of you just cooking polymer clay, taking some, uh, my gosh, you can use makeup, you can use chalks, you can use so many things. And you go in there and you just blush it and whatever. I wanted it to be layered. I want my the color to blend in with my polymer clay. I don't want it to look like I just blotched it on. And by doing it in layers and with the wax, because the wax is to me is restoring it as I am putting paint on it. Okay, now I showed you that technique. Now if I were going to blush it, I have my, now this is water mixable oil color. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit on my table. 
you just don't want to do it with uh, like acrylics or with with a paint that is not for oil because our wax is oil polymer clay is oil even though we can put acrylic on it I just don't put acrylic on on my porcelain dolls because it's just not the look that I'm going for okay I'm going to take another q-tip and let me see if I can get a little piece melted on the other side here okay now I'm going to take a little bit of my paint here and I'm going to put it in my in my wax and again like I said you're going to build the color so the first one that you put on it you're not going to see it really but trust me as I'm doing this I'm seeing how it's changing but it's changing slightly and then I'm going to wipe that down and I'm going to do it again another layer and sometimes if I put it in the wax put it in the paint or I can put it in the paint dab it and then put the wax over it doesn't matter and this is this head here is Fimo clay I've used wax on Kato and I've used wax on Cernet if you are using other brands I will always suggest it in my tutorials to please try it on a scrap piece of clay before you put it on your your piece because I don't know how wax will react to other brands but to be honest with you I don't see why wax would not be compatible with um, polymer clay okay I'm going to put a little bit more and I might need to put a little bit more paint down okay now you're you're not going to see me going for a very strong color but I will do it for the camera because I would be almost stopping at the color that I'm at maybe a little bit more now I'm going to show you if I wanted to just take some paint now because that's got wax just a little bit of paint and in porcelain when you blush you always take your brush which take your q-tip and you always go out from the center out because you want the stronger color in the center and then the light going the other way okay so I'm going to wipe that off and you kind of like lightly blot you can even like blotch it you know whatever it is that you see is working for you I don't know if you can see it I'm going to turn it on this side and I'll turn it on this side now I really can't see on the camera if that's really showing up because I seem to have a glare so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on really strong so that you can see now remember I would do this on the whole head with now the, the first part would be the tinting then the blushing would be 
after. Okay, I think you can see this now. It just really gives it a nice feel. It gives it a nice look. It gives it, to me, it gives it a more natural look, like almost like it is really skin color and you didn't throw paint on it and you got a blotch, unless that's the type of doll that you're going for. Okay, now, this is what I would do at this point. Many of you know that I always bake my pieces with baking soda. And this is the time that I take the baking soda out of my oven. I put the temperature up to 200 degrees. I will put my head and I would put all of my other pieces into the oven. And all I would do, I've never really timed it. I'm just going to guess at it, maybe for five minutes, ten minutes. But all I want to do is I just want to heat, heat the pieces up with the wax on it. And then this is going to be an option for you. Again, many of you that follow me, you know that I don't ever let my pieces cool down in my oven. I always pull them out. And for many of you that are here for the first time, the reason why I do that is because I had more breakage with my dolls when I let them stay in the oven to cool down. I gave that, that stage of my 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 own technique a long I gave it up a long time ago now I will take it out of the oven and when I take it out of the oven you have to be really careful because you want the the head and your pieces to be warm really well hot okay because I want that that wax to do what I want it to do and if you have, let's say if you have a little piece that you missed, don't worry about it because what you're going to do is you're going to pull them all out of the oven and I will put them in a paper towel and I'll just hold them. Wait till they cool off because you don't want to start working with them while they're hot because they are fragile. Let them cool off until you can handle it. Then what I do is I look at my piece and I will just take a clean paper towel and I will go over it it and I will just give it a good rub down like. Now will that paint come off? No, it doesn't come off, but if you do want it to come off, it will come off with acetone. Okay, now I'm not going to get into how I um, paint the eyes or anything, but I'm going to show you a doll that I'm working on and I've already put the eyes in. I've already um, have done the paint. I am going to change the color of her lips, but this is the thing that I want to show you. Now this part here, okay, when I was doing her her head, and I did, I put the eyes in and everything, I am still going to have to build her head up. But that's why you see the clay up here. But this is the part that I want to share with you is that if I didn't have her eyelashes on, I do take clear wax and I put it on a Q-tip. And I love doing this. And I will put it right on the hot wax, right on those eyes. Now these eyes are my own eyes that I make. These are that I have in her eyes are glass beads. I have a tutorial that I did with the wooden beads and I did a lot of research about glass beads and I found some great information. I found out why uh, glass beads wouldn't work for me. And when I found that information, if you want to know about it, it's on my blog and it's on my Facebook. Now I prefer using the glass beads. Okay, so I would go ahead and I would just put the clear wax on it. And if I have my eyeliner on it, you still can do this, at least the way that I'm doing it, which I will get into that later on. Okay, and then I would go ahead and I would just wipe that wax off. Oh, here I got a little piece of fuzz. Okay. 
I would go in there and I would just really wipe it down and what it does is that it just shines them up waxes them up and the only thing that you do have to do you will spend a little bit of time of cleaning up the wax around the edges of the eyeball but I really like it and the other thing that I'm using on here I am using the magic gloss UV gel so if you're using something else other than this please try it on experimental eyes now one other thing that I do want to share with you with eyes and I find that this ha can happen to me a lot and I stop doing it is that there are certain paints depending on the paints that you're choosing to use for your eyes put them in your oven before you put them in your doll and see if the heat changes the color because sometimes I've had colors that I think oh wow I really like this and when I put them in the oven it's changed the color so th that would be the only thing that I would say that I have learned to work with with the eyes is that the paints can change color with heat okay um, I wanted to share that technique with everyone with the wax and I also want to say this too is that I'm bringing the wax to my channel at this particular time because everybody has been emailing me and asking me a lot of questions about ball jointed doll I didn't bring the wax out in the beginning because I have I had and I still have a lot of people that are just picking up polymer, polymer clay for the first time and I have found by teaching students that with polymer clay go a little bit slow with techniques because if I got into all of the techniques that I do and they have not learned the fundamentals of polymer clay it becomes overwhelming and they become discouraged so since I've been getting a lot of emails asking me about ball jointed and in the direction of time for me to show you about wax this is why it is coming out at this time so there is a lot that we can do with wax and in the future I'm going to be showing you that there is many things that we can do with wax and polymer clay so everyone I hope you've enjoyed this please subscribe if you haven't like leave a comment if you have a question I answer everyone and I will see you in my next tutorial